بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیو ویورز السلام علیکم آئی ایم یو ہوز فیصل رضا خان اینڈ یو آر واچنگ فور سائٹ ویورز ایئر ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی تھری این ایکٹیو ایئر فار پاکستان ڈپلومیسی وائل چیلنجنگ ایٹ ڈیفینس اینڈ اسٹریٹجک فرانس اسپیشلی ایٹ دا کاؤنٹر ٹیرزم ٹو مین ڈسپائٹ آل چیلنجز پاکستان اسرٹ اٹ سیلف انٹرنیشنلی بلڈ اٹس پروفائل اینہانس اٹس ریلیشنز وتھ ڈفرنٹ کنٹریز and engaged different ration, uh, nations in all domains, particularly economy, trade, investments, technologies, and defense. Pakistan's defense gets strengthened during this year. Additional technologies, particularly the induction of state-of-the-art latest weapons, including frigates, submarines, main battle tanks, missile systems, air defense systems, fighter jets and unmanned combat aerial vehicles. To discuss diplomacy and defense domain during the year 2023, we have in our studios uh, Saira Ijaz, she is the analyst, Hassan Khan, senior journalist, most welcome to you both being in studios, and Dr. Vaseem Ishaq, he is the senior analyst joining us online, most welcome to you, sir. My first question, Saira, to you. Uh, pertaining to the year 2023, Uh, Kashmir and Palestine are still burning, particularly Gaza. Do you think that the world, international world particularly, has given much attention to these both issues? Uh, actually, the uh, currently global politics is marred with very challenges. And the scenario and the overall global politics have been, you know, is passing through an unsettling times. Uh, global economy is also, you know, uh, is uh, facing very numerous challenge, particularly post-COVID-19 uh, scenario. So, in internationally, if you see it uh, from that perspective, the current times are unsettling times. Now, let's come to these two main uh, humanitarian crises and the issues, uh, unresolved, unsettled issues. I think, yes, uh, now the international community is giving Uh, they're paying heed to these and Pakistan played a very positive and a constructive role uh, uh, both at diplomatically and at strategi strategically because Pakistan is a very important uh, country when we uh, strategically. So I think yes, people are paying heed. Uh, I would be very honest here, uh, Palestine's issue is being, is now at the you know radar and internationally and uh, countries are paying much attention to this. But when it comes to Kashmir, uh, th th there is a lot more to be done. So, uh, Hassan, when we are talking about uh, organization of Islamic cooperation, uh, what about uh, this important organization regarding the grave issues of Palestine and Kashmir? Along with that, uh, <coughs> desecration of the Holy Quran and particularly in the Western countries, uh, Islamophobia and uh, the protection of holy sites. Uh, thank you very much, Faisal. I think let me begin uh, with this, that uh, the, it is the glass half full, uh, it's not the glass half empty uh, story. So definitely, I think you look at the, especially what is going on in Palestine and Gaza, uh, the, the OIC has a meeting, the OIC contact group has a meeting, where even they have done it on Kashmir also. Uh, and you know, but the situation is a bit different because the Western world and the, and, and the, and the US, they are, to, they are not, On, on a different side at this time. But and uh, the delegation of the Arab countries uh, visiting But you saw we have that uh, resolution from the Security Council is calling for a ceasefire um, and um, aid to the, to, to the Ghazan who are stranded there and who are getting killed uh, daily by the, uh, by the indiscriminate bombing of the, the Israeli forces. So I think on that front definitely the issue has been highlighted and And look on the, it is what we call it a blessing in disguise. It is very unfortunate for me to use this word for the Ghazan, for the Palestinians who are getting killed. But it is a blessing in disguise because the issue of um, uh, today, uh, it is no more, uh, which it was before the, uh, the, the October 7. Palestinian know, issue is no more at the back burner. No, no more at the back burner. It was once uh, we were hearing the news that uh, the Arab countries, uh, they were just rushing to recognize Israel. The UAE have, have done it and the others were just in the process. But I think this, this issue, the, 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 the way I think ignited it and uh, the way they have conducted that, that famous uh, uh, October 7 uh, operations, no doubt 
Palestinian have, uh, have, I think they have a lot of sacrifices at the moment. 21,000 human lives. It is the biggest, I think, uh, human casualties in any war in such a limited time. But it has, I think, highlighted, re-highlighted and brought to the front uh, the Palestine issue. And you will see, uh, uh, I, 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 I wrote about it, that these, these, the, the blood uh, which has been shed by the Israeli forces of the Palestinian, it will never soak too easily. It will never Definitely. be digested. It, it will never be digested so easily. It will have an impact and I think it will keep bleeding the Israels for the coming 50 years. In, Definitely in, the yeah. very vi uh, valuable sacrifices yeah. made by the Palestinians. It will not go waste. Not yeah. go waste. Yes, uh, a Palestinian issue will be settled down along with the Kashmir issue. And what about the Islamophobia and uh, uh, protection of the holy sites? Uh, uh, particularly we have seen a lot of in incidents in 2023 related to the desecration of the Holy I Quran. Think it, and you know, you know the, it, it, this is a very, very important question. So, you know, I think it is, it is in Denmark, it is in Sweden, uh, where they have no proper laws uh, for uh, stopping or discouraging desecration of the Holy Quran and the other holy books because it was, it, the, 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 they were just taking a, a site of an excuse that uh, we have this liberty of expression so a man can talk against uh, the, the 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 holy book any holy book they were they were saying even they talk against the bible the quran and the other uh, the, the torah so but it is not the case um, and I'm, I'm not saying that what happened in 2000, uh, sorry, 19, uh, in, the, in the Second World War with the, uh, with, with the, with the Jews and, and Germans and other countries, we, nobody is condoning that. But even after almost 80 years, uh, you can't criticize, you can't talk about mm. that. So definitely that has been taken as a, this Semiticism, uh, it has been taken as a holy. So Pakistan was were on the front uh, uh, taking this issue up with the Western countries, with the U.S., that there shall be, I think, certain restrictions uh, on these desecrations are uh, making fun of the holy, uh, the, the holy personalities and the holy scriptures and the holy books, etc. And I think that the, the OIC and the other Muslim countries they begged it, and I think most probably at the moment Islamophobia is the most talk about. Uh, look, you can resolve an issue when you discuss it. Until and unless it is not on the table, until and unless it is not being discussed uh, at the public forum, at various forums. So you can't resolve it. But it now, is important for the Islamic world to highlight it. Yes, yeah, in the Islamic then, world, then it's going to they be have discussion. done special in 2020. Obviously, obviously. They have done it. Uh, your point well taken. Uh, Dr. Vaseem, when we are talking about uh, uh, Pakistan's uh, relations with India, Pakistan is always at the forefront to normalize these relations, but uh, uh, on the Kashmir issue particularly. but. Uh, uh, but uh, when we are talking about the Modi regime, its draconian occupation of the Kashmir, atrocities there, genocide, war crimes, and along with that, uh, hegemonic and exp expansionist designs, uh, Pakistan uh, is uh, just uh, 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 looking the situation. And uh, uh, what about that, uh, Pakistan-India relations? Faisal, Pakistan is a peace-loving country. Pakistan has a promulgated policy of peaceful coexistence with all its neighbors. Unfortunately, the unsettled issues of last 75 years, where the Kashmir is the most prominent issue and most unresolved issue on the UN agenda as well, we have seen that unfortunately because of the non-resolution of Kashmir issue, the relations between Pakistan and India has always been challenging. While we had few very brief spells where we could have a rapprochement between Pakistan and India, but unfortunately, they were not uh, lasting very long. And however, there has always been a silver lining on Pakistan's diplomacy side and Pakistan's foreign office should be given a credit that they have always tried to at least manage the relations with India from the active hostilities to at least to a level where we should not demonstrate active hostilities against each other. However, unfortunately, from the Indian side, and especially since the Prime Minister Modi has come into power, in last his two tenures, he has actually tried to marginalize Pakistan regionally as well as globally. And just to please its domestic audience, he has always been trying to malign Pakistan in one way or the other and tarnish Pakistan's image. So therefore, his two tenures have been absolutely challenging with Pakistan with respect to our bilateral relations with India. And those Indian intransigent has always been affected the Pakistan's relations with major power like the United States, like China, and even the other regional uh, countries like uh, Sri Lanka and Afghanistan. So therefore, from my perspective, 
despite pakistan's best efforts of managing the relations with india the indian negative response is a big challenge during our, throughout 2023 we have always tried our best to manage our relations but the indian response has always been negative one testimony of this is the pakistan and indian cricket teams while pakistan voluntarily sent our cricket team as an ambassadors of pakistan well india refused to do so and india is always trying even all such sports events which are they are scheduled in pakistan they try and oppose it to hold it at some other neutral venue but not in pakistan so in the prevailing and obtaining environment the response of the indian current government is a real challenge for us that has to be managed in the upcoming 2024 as well so uh, dr wasim we haven't seen any sort of uh movement regarding the revival of sark uh, as india hijacked it and secondly uh, pakistan is very active on the asean front as well so do you think that there would be more engagements in 2024 while we have always been optimistic and sark is a very important regional organization and the only organization for south asian countries where they can just sit down join hands together and then they can resolve their issues but unfortunately ever since its formulation India's intransigent and India's hegemonic designs and hegemonic behavior has always tried to bulldoze its all regional neighboring countries so therefore sark has never been so effective but as long as the only regional forum available for the south asian countries to sit down i think there is a requirement to revitalize it and the elections in india and pakistan in 2024 would be defining for future relations of uh, india pakistan as well as the future of sark so therefore on an optimistic note we can say that the elected government in pakistan as a result of 2024 elections would certainly be inclined to have a good relations and a peaceful coexistence with india and all the neighboring countries so there is actually a hope that sark may be revitalized so therefore uh, that also depends on the indian 2024 elections if the prime minister modi's party again comes back probably then the prospects of its revitalization would be dimmed as he has always demonstrated hegemonic designs however any change in the indian political system and the political culture might be very positive development for revitalization of sark so uh, dr wasim one of the important challenging uh, challenges of afghanistan do you think that it's still a challenge or an opportunity as well uh, particularly uh, in 2023 and uh, next year in 2023 afghanistan was a big challenge uh, instability in afghanistan was a big challenge and of course the overall bilateral relations between pakistan and afghanistan were being a very important were real challenge because of the resurgence of terrorism in afghanistan and resurgence of ttp inside pakistan's tribal former tribal areas and even uh, to an extent spreading it to kpk and uh, balochistan so at the bilateral level it has been very important we have had a constructive engagement with afghanistan but now we are also involved with afghanistan at multilateral forum like we had quadrilateral dialogues trilateral dialogues and now even china is also actively engaged with afghanistan which is actually providing us a huge leverage for resetting our relations with afghanistan to now the afghan government has also realized that for having a peaceful and stable afghanistan is not only in their interest but also in the interest of pakistan so therefore they have now tried to demonstrate certain physical actions under which they have uh, tried to prosecute certain ttp uh, uh, activist inside afghanistan just to actually create a confidence building way yes so therefore we are optimistic that during 2024 the trajectory of relations bilateral relations between pakistan and afghanistan would start uh, witnessing some upward trend well elaborated dr wasim uh, uh, saira when we are talking about uh, 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 successes regarding the counter terrorism how much pakistan's counter terrorism campaign is uh, uh, going successfully and uh, particularly when we are talking about uh, united states china the big powers and the regional countries how much they are supportive in that uh, 2023 is a very positive year uh, for pakistan in terms of counter terrorism activities and counter because in may 2023 uh, european union uh, uh, gave the clear threat to pakistan from the highly sensitive countries and uh, i think which is a very positive development and it shows our commitment our diplomatic efforts our political efforts to you know to tell the world that we are against it rather we are victims of it um, so uh, i think it's a very positive thing and uh, uh, all the governments uh, 
the current uh, caretaker set, set up and the earlier uh, governments were all committed to it and our highly official and uh, very you know trained diplomats um, at all forums raised their voice be it UN be it uh, other uh, regional organizations like OIC ECO uh, we are now the you know ECO is a very active uh, organization in Pakistan raised its voice very much um, so I think there is no uh, doubt about it that Pakistan has done a lot and uh, and the uh, you know uh, the decision regarding uh, Afghanistan's uh, illegal uh, uh, to send the back the illegal Afghanis back to their home uh, is also the you know uh, link of that chain because illegal foreigners illegal, illegal foreigners, foreigners, foreigners. So, uh, Hassan when we are talking about Pakistan US relations uh, how much this uh, 2023 was important regarding Pakistan's engagement with Washington Two things I want uh, to talk about. One is the Pakistan the US relation that this counter terrorism is quite uh, uh, um, important topic, especially for our viewers. Pakistan US relation, I think in 2023, uh, uh, you know, there is it is on a positive trajectory. The reason is uh, before that, prior that, especially in last uh, few years, especially beyond 2020, 2018, 2021, uh, the relations between the US were quite to a large extent deteriorated and there was uh, we were not at the point of no communication but at least there was not that warm and that robustness in the relations which historically the US and Pakistan uh, was but for the last couple of years we have seen no, engagement now we have seen an engagement especially 22 23 onward now we are looking at it is a type of a resetting especially mm. uh, when the uh, when the PDM was in government and president uh, sorry Bilawal Bhutto Zardari was the former restoring the place of relations yeah, I think they have done a lot of homework we will say the lot of work sped work to restore it there was, there were uh, high level delegation exchanges uh, between the two countries and uh, then uh, I think the latest one is the visit just of just recently Pakistan, the army chief uh, has visited uh, yes, chief of yes. army staff visit uh, to the US and it was a very good interaction with almost at each and every level and it's a quite open and candid discussions on things like security like counter terrorism mm -hmm. like uh, like like ec 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 uh, economics uh, things and trade and economic and export and imports so i think now in other very important thing in pakistan us relations look pakistan has been stuck in a region where you have to be uh, this is a very tight rope walking in a way uh, you have china is there is a power which has already emerged you have russia uh, like, like there is a Chinese and U.S. rivalries to an extent. I'm not saying that it is too open, but to an extent there is a Chinese and U.S. That rivalry. That is still existing. And yes. there is a Russia and Western uh, rivalry. And you know, U.S. is on the West, uh, especially due to the Ukrainian war. And in such a situations where three superpowers are engaged in rival positions with each other, and you as a small medium power, mm -hmm. you have to make adjustment. So that's why I use the word tightrope walking for Pakistan to make adjustment with the US and to keep its relations. Pakistan always there as a pivot in between all yeah, the, 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 the it's, it's, it's being as a pivot, yes, you, you use it very rightly. So for Pakistan, it was quite uh, what you call it dext needs dexterity mm -hmm. to have China as a uh, all weather friends and as a as a I think there is there is no doubt in Chinese friends. Hassan, if you Pakistan. if you respond briefly, uh, yeah. because uh, when we are talking about Pakistan, U.S. Pakistan China relation, then you know that BRICS is a very important platform. Yeah. Pakistan officially uh, submitted its application to be uh, a member of this important forum. So how do you see this one? And secondly, Pakistan got successes at the COP28, which was held in yeah. United Arab Emirates. So how do you see both? I think this is very important, the Brexit. And it's quite unfortunate that Pakistan is not a member of it. So far, I think we should have been uh, in the Brexit because it is, a, it, is, it, is, it, is the, it is an association of the developing countries. And it's important countries like Brazil, we have, we have China, we have Iran, we have India, and uh, countries like it. So I think Pakistan has applied for it. And uh, there, is a, there is a very positive... Uh, so far, we are very positive. So definitely, due to its diversity in Brex, uh, uh, you have the uh, South, uh, you have the South Americans, you have the uh, Asians, you have, I think, the, uh, the country from the Middle East, etc. So and I, African as well. Uh, so South Africa, yeah, is, South uh, Africa, yes. the African. You have the Saudi Arab is a very important. So we have a lot of friends in uh, in Brex. Like we have China there, we have Iran there, we have Saudi Arab there, and definitely we have South Africa and we would, have. Brazil. Would you like to add something uh, on Brex?
but there is a one challenge that is of India because India would do every possible thing. But there is no to, you know, that's, <laughs> that's the point. But diplomatically, uh -huh. that that's a big challenge for us to get the full membership of you know BRICS, and uh, India is there, so we have to have a very. Or India is going to um, put hurdles, always that's put hurdles yes, there. And so there are problems. Right, look, look what about CEO in Shanghai Cooperation Organization? Yes. Pakistan was, I think, the found one of the founding members. Later on, India also joined it. So, especially in such, I, I, I don't expect that Indians will go to that extent. Definitely, you can expect anything from the Indians, especially when they are even on their By the way, Pakistan, Pakistan also got uh, uh, chairmanship of uh, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Shanghai, yes. head of government. Head of, yeah. head of the uh, government. So Pakistan uh, is going uh, to host uh, that meeting as well. So, uh, how do you see the COP28 success of Pakistan and lots of achievements? I for think Pakistan, Pakistan is not only the COP28. If you look at the COP earlier uh, sessions, 27 and the, uh, the other one, Pakistan was engaged at every at every level, and mm. especially uh, when these super floods in Sin, uh, where almost I think uh, three more than three million people were affected last year in 2022, and yes. almost 25 percent of the area was uh, was flooded and inundated. And Pakistan very robustly taken this up with the international community that look, we are the victims of climate. Uh, what do you, climate terrorism? Let's use that. This is this is a climate terrorism. You mm. people are causing climate changes and we people are the sufferer. Mm -hmm. So I think Pakistan took that issue up at every level, especially at the COP28, where we were we were supported by our friends, especially when it was in UAE. So we have a very, you know, UAE, UAE and Pakistan is a very close relation with each other. So I think Pakistan and at uh, Geneva, I think Pakistan also hosted yes, uh, yes. Uh, one of the uh, at, at the senior level uh, in Geneva in the cooperation of uh, UN. So I think Pakistan is now attracting uh, the, the especially the that support. was basically the resilient part the Pakistan resilient Pakistan's yes. environment and now I think look Pakistan is now ready to engage uh, with the international financial bodies with the climate uh, in uh, relate climate protect protectionism uh, that is already there uh, because the loss uh, and damage fund is already yeah, approved yeah, uh, green climate fund as green well as the adaptation fund, fund, fund and lots, lots of other Pakistan uh, engage uh, on that uh, fund as well Dr. Vaseem Dr. Vaseem is uh, <laughs> uh, uh, anxiously waiting for uh, our intervention so Dr. Vaseem uh, uh, what about uh, China Pakistan economic corridor because uh, we have just uh, uh, celebrated 10th anniversary of this important project what about uh, successes in uh, 2023 and how do you see its progress in future uh, projects related to that, the phase two of the CPAC? Look, Faisal, uh, despite challenges of uh, last about uh, three to four years when we had political instability in Pakistan, the CPAC was certainly affected because the progress of phase two, which was supposed to be starting two years ago, could not start. And also, because of the political instability, the investors' confidence, the security of Chinese investments, and the security of Chinese, all those who were working on different sites, we have witnessed that it was undergoing a lot of uh, challenges. So therefore, last about four years were almost sort of stalemate on China-Pakistan economic corridor. But since we have recently celebrated 10 years of BRI and 10 years of CPAC, and our caretaker prime minister visited Beijing and participated in third, third Belt and Road Forum, the Chinese leadership is very enthusiastic to see the elections happening peacefully in Pakistan. And as a result of elections, a new strong government coming in Pakistan so that the remaining part of uh, means phase two and remaining part of uh, CPAC, which is about four to five years, another work. So far, 25 billion US dollars investment has been completed and another about 25 to 30 billion dollars US investment is going to happen. So coming five years are very crucial and coming five years stability is also very, very crucial for completion of China-Pakistan economic corridor. We have seen all the political leadership in Pakistan is united on one issue that whenever they come in power, it's the agenda of all the political parties and is very encouraging and hotting to listen to uh, their uh, election slogans uh, almost on a daily basis now that one peaceful coexistence, good relations with all the neighboring countries, and especially the China and the major powers, and also the timely completion and execution of China-Pakistan economic corridor. So on a very optimistic note, I am very positive that the remaining amount of investment of US dollar 30 billion will inshallah be completed in the next government whosoever comes in power during that tenure. And for that, all the procedural issues, all the official formalities, 
and everything is lined up and i think it is just a matter of uh, go ahead as the election uh, as the new government is formed as a result of elections and i think it will be on a fast track pace definitely lots of hopes are hanging uh, uh, upon uh, pakistan china relations and obviously upon cpec as well so uh, dr wasim how do you see the uh, china as a lead weapon provider to pakistan as we have seen uh, during this year that we have got uh, uh, 054 alpha uh, uh, papa frigates for pakistan navy along with the submarine project uh, uh, hingor class submarines are already uh, going on then we have got uh, jet and c uh, fighter jet aircrafts and lots of other weaponries like vt4 tanks we have got uh, uh, air defense systems and uh, also going on with the latest technology regarding the missiles and all that so how do you see uh, china as a lead weapon provider faisal pakistan is actually located in a very vulnerable geographical location where we have seen 40 years of active hostilities in our neighborhood on the west and we also have a lot of relations uh, difficult relations with our eastern neighbor so pakistan is actually a epicenter where the great power competition has been played out in last good about four decades so from that context the readiness of our armed forces and the resilience of our nation has been guarantor of our sovereignty security territorial integrity as well as the societal fabrics the integration of societal fabrics so from that context we needed the state of the art weaponry state of the art equipment and state of the art communication equipment while we have diversified uh, inventory on, uh, with our armed forces however our relations with the united states have been transactional so therefore we face certain challenges from there we have good relations with turkey and they have been providing us but let me highlight over here that ever since we established our diplomatic relations with china china was one such country which always supported pakistan not only economically but also in the uh, way of defense production defense equipment and joint ventures and joint projects so therefore whatever china has provided it is our essential need china's uh, provision of all military hardware is usually guaranteed and without any sanctions and china has always been a good market for us to buy our defense uh, to uh, fulfill our defense needs and other than that china was all, all also willing to actually uh, uh, help us in our joint defense productions and we have in all three services across the board you find a joint defense production units and also we have been uh, we have been doing this joint production even within uh, china so we have a very good and robust cooperation at all three services and different levels and this progress is going to continue and further expand so uh, dr wasim when we are talking about pakistan turkey re relations uh, both countries are engaging at various fronts particularly at the defense production domain so Uh, uh whether we call it the milgem corvettes pakistan navy or uh, we have the uh, retrofitting or upgradation of the agosta 90b submarines or uh, uh, pakistan air force fifth generation project and all the other uh, projects how do you see that cooperation between pakistan and turkey so this is the litmus test of actually pakistan's successful diplomacy at the foreign office level as well as the military diplomacy we have not only relied only on one source of supply we have diversified our source and the success of that is that we have a very good relations with turkey with china with even russia now improving a lot we have some sort of inventory from russia and we also have a reasonably good relations with the united states which are now resetting so therefore all such countries are providing our defense needs are actually trying to help us in our defense needs turkey and china has always been on forefront and we appreciate that and i assure you that our this cooperation all three services try service level at the foreign office level as well as at the military diplomacy level will further mature and will further grow in year 2024 dr wasim your point well taken uh, uh, saira when we are talking about pakistan turkey relation trade and goods agreement uh, was a pivot uh, regarding the enhancement of trade and attain that 5 billion dollar trade bilaterally so how do you see that agreement because in 2023 uh, that was the benchmark 
Well, that's a very good initiative. And even before 2023, we saw many trade uh, agreements with uh, Turkey. And another thing I would like to highlight is the cultural links. Uh, and at media level, we have seen that uh, there was a deep penetration of their dramas um, in our society, and people really appreciated it. And they were, you know, materialized at government level. So I think we have always enjoyed, and with the passing. By the way, that was both because of Pakistan television. Ma, yes, yes, PTV uh, played a major and significant role in that. And the beautiful thing about the Tur Turkey Pakistan relations is that it is getting stronger with every passing year. No so, doubt about it. Uh, yes. yes. So, and we are get and it is win win situation for both the countries. And we have religious, cultural, and you know, uh, other diplomatic linkages which are back and forth uh, we are enjoying. And uh, this is the only relationship which is getting stronger, stronger uh, yes. with every passing so, year. When uh, uh, there is, uh, when we are talking about trade and uh, uh, particularly the investment dimension, uh, especially in energy, IT, uh, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia relations uh, go at another height because we have seen during this year that uh, uh, both countries are very much eager to have uh, investments on both sides and uh, to engage, uh, to have engagement at the economic and trade front. Look, I think Faisal, you definitely would have heard that lately Pakistan have this, uh, there is a strategic shift in, spa in Pakistan's policy. This is economic, uh, geo-economic uh, <coughs> focus is mostly on geo-economics and the economic diplomacy and you definitely this uh, SIFC um, um, special, uh, investment special investment facilitation, facilitation, facilitation yes. councils I think it is also doing a very good work especially in the Gulf countries especially in the, with our traditional friends like you mentioned Saudi Arab, Qatar, UAE and, and, and Kuwait, Turkey, Bahrain. Kuwait, Bahrain etc. Mm -hmm. So in Saudi Arabia it's always I think like the Chinese uh, whenever there is anything I think Pakistan whenever uh, got in need of something so Saudis have never disappointed. We very Sanitary. special relation with very Saudi special Arabia. Relation, Probably, historically, Saudi overall, yes. overall, if you see it, the people of Pakistan uh, have a deep love for the for for the you know, for the uh, Saudi Arab. Not only due to the holy places, but historically, as I said, whenever there is uh, uh, when Pakistan needs something, uh, whether it is in uh, due to the floods or due to any uh, 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 what you call it uh, uh, man-made uh, damage or it is a natural-made damages, I think so. Pakistan, Saudis were always at the forefront, and especially you know, <coughs> supplying oils at a at a time of need, etc. Even pumping our um, the the hard so, Hassan, currency. Hassan, so, Hassan, uh, pertaining to Saudi Arabia and Pakistan relations, how do you see this uh, road to Makkah project for pilgrims? And this is a, a, I think this is very special. This is very special that now. Uh, the, 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 the pilgrims, the hajis, they will not be, uh, they, they will not go through their troubles when they Immigration reach Immigration and custom, that yeah, will be custom, done here in Pakistan. That will be done in Islamabad, that will be done in Karachi, etc. So, uh, they will be clear. So, the day, they, they will go there just as you come to your own country. And you, without going to the immigration and things like that, you just go uh, and, and take the outer channel. Mm. So I think for Pakistan, this is not an ordinary thing, this road to Makkah. When I got it and when I tried to read it, that what this road to Makkah is, and then I came to know that Saudis immigration officials, their all officials will be here at Karachi. They will have a desk at Karachi airport at Islamabad airport. So far, I think only the two airports have this facility. So the, the, the hajibs once cleared here, so they will just go out when they reach the Jeddah airport. So I think this is, this is a very it, it, it represents that Pakistan and Saudi Arabia have a very special relationship. So uh, your point well taken. Uh, Dr. Vaseem, when we are talking about Special Investment Facilitation Council, it has uh, uh, done a groundwork for uh, uh, having uh, investments from uh, the Gulf Cooperation Council uh, countries. Uh, so what about the free trade agreement? Because uh, that is uh, now uh, approximately concluded and uh, expected to sign uh, in the next year. I think this is the biggest success of Pakistan's active dip diplomacy that at bilateral level we have had a relationship and the trade relations activated with all the Gulf countries and also GCC as a whole. So this is a great achievement for Pakistan and the GCC free trade agreement is about to be finalized. That will be a great, uh, I would say, accomplishment for Pakistan's uh, diplomacy. So uh, and also on account of a special investment facilitation council, this was a great facility and great strategic vision was actually gone in, in establishment of this organization. And so far it has delivered because the lot of hurdles and especially in the earlier days of CPAC, 
what we faced was that the most difficult thing was actually to reach out to different institutions and organizations for the approval process. So now this all has been gelled into a one window operation. That will be a great facilitation for all future upcoming investment. This has also increased investors' confidence, and that's why this GCC FTA is also one such thing which can be attributed to successful functioning of SIFC. At the so, uh, Dr. Vaseem, uh, Dr. Vaseem also, uh, please elaborate on uh, Pakistan-Iran relation as well as uh, uh, Pakistan got uh, uh, Manpashin border opened along with that 100 megawatts more uh, energy or power for Balochistan as well as the five-year strategic uh, uh, trade cooperation plan as well agreed between Pakistan and signed that. How do you see that one as well? As I highlighted earlier that Pakistan's policy of peaceful coexistence with all its neighbors these are those tangible accomplishments which we have done so far, and especially at the end of year 2023, we can say in a quantifiable terms. So our relation with, relationship with Iran were also stalled in the last few years, and we have come a long way. We have IP, used to be IP, I is also awaiting at uh, Taftan borders. We have also done bilateral trade agreements now with uh, Iran. We've also done beyond that counterterrorism agreement with the uh, uh, joint counterterrorism agreement with Iran. So the border security and border uh, monitoring arrangements also. We have also done certain agreements on how to reduce smuggling coming from Iran, etc. on both sides of the border. So lot, lot has happened and lot is going to happen. We have also tried to reset our relations in the evolving regional and global order. Very well, very well elaborated, Dr. Vaseem, when we are talking about GSP plus extension by the European Union because uh, uh, 10 years uh, GSP plus facility is going to end on 31st of December and next year it would be an extension for another four years. What, what is your hope? Pakistan's acceptance in EU as an organization and Pakistan's overall relationship with the EU have also improved a lot. And last two years were very significant on account of Pakistan's active diplomacy. Previously, it was slightly stagnant, but in the last two years, we have had an active diplomacy. And as a result of that, we have seen a lot of to and fro visits to European Union headquarters, the individual European countries, as well as Pakistan. And Pakistan's current foreign minister and the previous foreign minister were actually played a pivotal role in revitalizing our relations. And let me also quote from uh, Pakistan's previous foreign minister, uh, Mr. Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, that Pakistan's diplomacy is back again. So that means that we have now reinitiated a process of resetting our relations with the entire global countries, whosoever actually, uh, all significant countries. And very well, Pakistan. very well elaborated, Dr. Vaseem, very well elaborated. Uh, Hassan, uh, when we are talking about uh, Pakistan's uh, uh, diplomacy uh, globally, particularly in region, Pakistan is always striving for having good relations with all. But uh, what about... Uh, uh, Indian fake propaganda, Indian uh, disinformation, particularly the disinfo lab. Along with that, uh, when we are talking about uh, false flag operations, some sort of fake surgical strikes, how do you see that the Indian behavior uh, in diplomacy towards Pakistan? Look, Faisal, I think India is just wasting its time in uh, things like that, so that, as you mentioned this. Uh, and now they have a, a special core for this uh, uh, dissemination of fake news. And yes. that they call it Core 15. Uh, yes, uh, to like, some like, extent. Like, 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 uh, like that. And I think this is quite unfortunate. Instead of spending these energies on positive things like re-engagement, resolution of the uh, disputed things, boosting trades, investments, etc. Because we are the closest to each other. We have the longest borders But then what other. about Chunky and un Kathleen Thuri? Uh, yeah, th uh, this is quite unfortunate. But I am pretty sure that this elections, definitely India is going uh, in 2024 uh, to a new election. Definitely, def they will exploit this false flag operations. They will exploit uh, anti-Pakistan propaganda and they will use anti-Pakistan rhetoric and in, especially anti-Muslims, not only anti pa And this is, it's a very, it's a dichotomy in the Indian politics that they, 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 they take it as in uh, the same, anti-Pakistan and anti-Muslims. I think anti-Pakistan is one thing, anti-Muslim is another thing. In India, there are already 250 million Muslims. So I think if, if, when they go against the Muslim, it means that they are going against their own people. It's quite unfortunate. And the way this, they are committing extra judicial killing in um, in uh, Indian held Kashmir already the world is taking notice of it but look at the Pakistan what the Pakistan is doing at the moment there is not a single international organization which I think important one which Pakistan is not a member of it 
whether that is at the UN level, whether that is at the West level, whether it is the US or the other. So I think Pakistan is, this is for Pakistan instead of focusing too much, uh, what, what we call it the Indian centric policies. Mm. I mm. think Pakistan have this disengaged itself from that, no doubt. India is a concern for us. It is a big concern for us. The reason is the, the, the there is this, this issue of Kashmir is there. I know the way the Indian uh, uh, Indian forces, the occupying forces, are committing atrocities against the innocent Kashmiris. I think that is a matter of concern, not only for us, for the entire Muslim world. Definitely, even that for is the, the matter UN, of concern the, uh, for all of us. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Hassan for being with us here in studios and well elaborated. Thank you very much, uh, Saira, for your candid views. And thank you very much, uh, Dr. Vaseem, uh, for being with us online. Uh, thank you very much for uh, your valuable comments. Uh, viewers, as we all know that uh, uh, Pakistan is uh, in the, at the center of uh, pivot where uh, the region, uh, its, uh, uh, region is progressing uh, and uh, Pakistan want that progress. Pakistan want peace, development, tranquility. Uh, to have uh, uh, a prosperity in the region. But despite of all economic crunch, Pakistan performed well at uh, uh, foreign, uh, uh, foreign diplomacy level as well as the defense fronts. Uh, diplomacy uh, worked at uh, the different aspects and also Pakistan's armed forces were much successful uh, against the menace of uh, terrorism. Uh, we hope uh, and we welcome uh, year 2024. Uh, we hope that this year uh, brings uh, more laurels for Pakistan's foreign affairs, pa Pakistan's diplomacy and Pakistan's defense as well and in all domains. And uh, particularly we pray uh, that this year uh, must have to attain uh, a long-term peace, stability, uh, development and prosperity for Pakistan and for the people of Pakistan. This is all uh, from uh, today's foresight. It's time to sign off. Allah Hafiz.